What's up, guys? My name is Miles. And my name is Fez. And this is The Commodity. And today we are taking a look at the 2022 Perdua or Perdua. Perdua. Uh, Alza MPV full safety Android Auto, like it always should have had. Free RFID from RM65K. Yeah, so obviously, you know, closer to the beginning of our channel, we did quite a few car uh reactions especially from vietnam and malaysia uh, vietnam vehicles are actually what kicked our channel off uh with that being said we have not done a car video in quite some time but this video was suggested to us by cheap cheap one of our ogs what's up cheap cheap thank you so much for the suggestion we figured we would go ahead and do this kick it back to the og days and take a look at this new uh Peridua alza so guys, before we hop into this video, if you would go ahead and help us thank today's sponsor. We were pretty skeptical when we were first introduced to the bone conduction audio technology, but the Ouya bone conduction waterproof headphones took that skepticism away pretty quickly. These IP68 rated headphones are perfect for people like us that enjoy every second that they can get in the water, but also want to enjoy music as well. Being made of lightweight titanium materials, they are super comfortable and won't cause earaches after long usage like traditional headphones. Not only do they support Bluetooth, but they also have 16 gigabytes of memory to download music onto the headphones themselves. That way you can listen to music underwater without Bluetooth connection issues. If you want to get a pair for yourself or a friend, click our affiliate link below in the description. Also, if you would, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell notification icon. That way you guys can stay informed on our future videos. Give this video a like if you enjoy it. And if you'd like to help support the channel even more and get an exclusive... Hey, exclusive, exclusive. YouTube short shout out. Click that join button down below. Let's hop in. And I still haven't responded to Cheap Cheap on his message directly to me. So I'm going to message him the day before this goes out, which is in three days, I believe. Something like that, yeah. And I will say, now nah, we're not going to do car videos. And then the very next day it comes out. Yeah, just to, I like that. So, Cheap Cheap, this one's for you. That's, we're, the, you're the reason that we're actually even considering it. Yeah. So. This is it, guys. The car that a lot of you have been waiting for. The brand new, all new 2022 Perodua Alza. So, let's go ahead and take a look at this front end. It, I mean, it looks sharp. It looks quite a bit different. It looks like they're going for a completely different design on the front bumpers. Right. Because the older ones do not have this design. It almost looks Lexus, kind of. Yeah. Uh, because Lexus calls theirs a, uh, what do they call it? I forget what they call their grill, where it comes out in like a thimble or a, something like that. A spool grill or something like that. I don't know. It's sexy. I yeah, mean, no, it, it's I like definitely it. got the sharp angles on it. It's got headlights like a Tesla, and I need to mute my phone. But it looks really good. Like the original version, which, by the way, is now 13 I like that years color. old. Yeah. This is a compact it MPV looks like kids. with it seven looks like seats. Mm -hmm. Now, clearly, a lot of things has changed in those long 13 years. And this second generation Alza is a massive improvement over the original in every single aspect. It's got the sequential... Uh, oh yeah, a massive improvement over the original in every single. I aspect. like that. So now, quick question: Maybe somebody will have the answer. Okay, so like on the new Hummer EV, you know how it says Hummer on the front? Mm -hmm. You know how it does that? How it has OLED screens? Really? So I'm kind of curious. I, I mean, I don't know if they're using just regular LEDs and they program it into like a little daughter board in the back somehow to For this to do the sequential. Or if it's some type of little tiny screen. Guarantee you it's it's just small LEDs. And just somehow programmed Because I think they even it. do that in the currently in the um, uh, Audis. Their sequential oh, yeah, is still they, LEDs. They might very much have... Because they don't have... You don't you can't look at them real close right. and see the LEDs, like the old school stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but considering the price on some of those right in fact i want to say their tail lights are well, like even my car it just looks like plasma but i know for a fact yeah. my car is not yeah because those are different I mean, plus gears and right. price and all that kind of stuff but yeah anyways i'm curious how that works. right let's find out together but give it time they're going to be screens in there instead of lights mm -hmm. 
The original Alza was a huge success for Perodua with almost 400,000 units sold since wow. 2009. It sold so well that at its peak, it's 3 out of difference. 5 MPVs sold in Malaysia were Alzas. In fact, in its last year in That's 2021, Perodua <laughs> still sold as many Alzas as they did the much newer, far more modern 7-seat SUV. So, we wow. are now getting a second generation Alza, which Bro. by the way, is only the second ever Perodua model to get its name carried forward into a new model. Think about it. Really? The Kanchil turned in That's crazy. Yeah. That's and the only, the, the second one, or do you say the only one? The second one. To ever have a second generation right. design. Yeah. And not just throw away the, the moniker and come up with a new one. Right. That's crazy. That seems very expensive, at least in the U.S., because of all the copyright and the, not copyright, what's it called? Um, yeah, ba basically the same concept. I can, just can't think of the word. Uh, but where nobody else can use your, uh, like, logos, names, and all that kind of stuff. Right, right. Um, so it's crazy to think that you go through all this. So trademark. Nobody, trademark, thank yeah. you. Uh, trademark everything, because... I'm sure at this level, you hire lawyers. You don't just go to the local city and just be like, we want to trademark this. Right. Um, but that's crazy to think that that's the first one. Second. Second one, sorry. Um, it seems like that, like, again, I think that sounds just very expensive and very wasteful. Uh, but then again, rebranding is very hard to do. Well, they also, I mean, haven't changed it. This is just the second that's the other crazy part. Is it's been like that for so long. So do y'all as consumers want to see up, like minor upgrades? Like we get minor upgrades in probably every car. Mm -hmm. Like uh, two years out, you might get like taillight changes, but they're not, they're kind of the same design, but they just change it just a little bit, but not drastically. I'd say every three to four years, there's a, a drastic, a drastic change. Body and then change. maybe about every eight to 10 years, and it's a completely looking different car, a di completely different looking car. Mm -hmm. So me as a consumer, I would be looking forward to just like little tidbits of changes. Now, the only car that I can think of that just does very little bit, even from one generation to the next generation is Tesla. Yeah. Because the Model S has changed very little. They changed the grill mm -hmm. and the headlights and very, very, very minimal change. So, but this was a huge change. This was a brand new car. Right into the Viva and then Asia. The Kambara changed into the Nautica and now Ativa. Only the Myvi has kept its name across course, generations and now mm -hmm. the Alza as well. This time the Alza oh, is so very yeah, closely based on the Daihatsu Xenia and Toyota Avanza. There is also a fourth twin mm. in the family, the Toyota Veloz, which is meant to be a more premium upmarket version of that's why the grills look like that yeah of course okay Perodua has given alza its own styling both outside and inside i was seeing but toyota the relationship Lexus is very I was clear to the see same. from the shape of the car and just like the ativa it's suv the, the new alza is also built on the daihatsu new global architecture or dnga in short at the front, the LED headlamps are exactly the same as the Avanza and Xenia, but what differentiates it is the very large and bold grille with a chrome bar down the center carrying the Perodua logo. The bumper houses the LED fog lamps, though unfortunately there's no LED daytime running lights for the new Alza. Mm. To get DRLs, you need to buy the option. So that's kind of going away here too. Not on, so yeah, on on just the basic models, yes, it's going away. Because it used to be on everything there for a little bit. Right. Like, even my car has daytime running lights, and it's a 2011. Mine doesn't. That's what I'm and saying. mine they're is going the top away of from, the line. Yeah, they're going away from it. Right. In fact, I know a lot of brands are even getting rid of uh, fog lamps. Mm -hmm. uh, because I guess they really don't do a whole lot. Right. Um, you can kind of tell, but they don't, because there's, I believe what I understand is they're supposed to light up below the fog mm -hmm. so you can see the road better. But I mean, and we get fog sometimes, but I've never noticed a difference. It, I think it just looks cool. So I always leave them on. Right. My current car doesn't have them, <laughs> but, uh, I it, like, it's just becoming a thing. But I, again, I feel like all of them should, ha every car should have daytime driving lights. I would feel like it's more like, Hey, there's a car right there. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. 
optional gear up prime body kit. This adds on the front lower kit with DRLs which start up with a nice animation as well as a rear body kit and a larger rear spoiler. Compared like to what we've seen the from Gear yeah. Up recently, the Blaze kit for the Artiva and the that Ace front, kit for the Mighty, sick. the that Aza's looks good too. Prime package looks very good. Far more subtle Man, they're doing and tasteful, it right. I think. In terms of size, this has clearly I wouldn't say grown subtle, over but the it's original very tasteful. Alza. So for length, this is over 200 millimeters longer than before. It's also slightly taller, slightly wider, although the wheelbase is exactly the same as the old car at 2750 really? mm. With the new DNGA platform, however, the new Alza is only 10 kilograms heavier than the old car, despite being quite significantly larger. It's also around 100 mm. kilograms lighter than both the Mitsubishi Expander and the RV, taking, yeah, as well action. as 300 kilograms less than the Proton Exora. As for suspension, the Alza rides on MacPherson struts up front and a torsion beam in the back. But Perodua has applied its own unique setup here. The Alza sits very low to the floor with a ground clearance of just 160 millimeters. All right, so the things that I can already tell you that I want to see in the future for this vehicle, or just every vehicle, is get rid of those torsion beams. You want those rear independent suspensions. They're fantastic. They make a huge difference. I don't think anybody uses torsion beams here anymore. That's just, you know, the solid beam right, right, right. goes back and forth. That that independent, because if you feel, if a one back tire feels the bump, it transfers mm -hmm. that bump to the other back tire. Whereas the independent, it tries to absorb as much, but it doesn't affect the other tire. Right. Um, but beyond that, like, it just looks like they finally, compared to the last model, and actually the, the Proton comparable. So as... as much fanboy as we are on Proton, I think they need to update. Oh, their dude, comparable they're going to get vehicle. destroyed. Now, what's the difference in price from one generation to the next generation? Is this like new? So, yeah, like if you were to buy a 2021 brand new model, what is the price difference from that one to this one? Right. So, like uh, Kia, we, we both sold Kias. I sold Kias for 12 years. I sold them before they got the new design and everything. And we went from selling Kias for between eight thousand dollars up to about I'd say eighteen to twenty one thousand, and then the very next year we got a brand new design with the Optima and all that kind of stuff, which is now dead. The two thousand eleven. It was two thousand twelve. Mm. Was when they got the body change. That's when Peter Schreier came in, and they changed the body style drastically, but the price went up like fifteen thousand yeah. dollars, like year over year. And it went from, why should I spend this much money on a Kia? But now we're talking about Kias that are well into the 60s, 70s. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, you don't have that argument anymore. I'm sure right. some people do, but it just changed. So so these start at 65. Obviously, it's not going to have all the fancy wheels and all the upgrades and stuff and this, you know, the body kit and all that. On the base to base, what is the price difference from year over year? If there is any, or if there's like, you know, because every car gets like what, one to two, three percent markup. Usually. Year over year or generation over generation. Uh, but yeah, let me know down in the comments. Far less than its competitors and even the closely related Toyota Velos and Avanza. I like those all little lines right in above it. 200 yeah. millimeters off the ground. Prodo has consciously chosen to make the Alza a very low MPV as before to aid its handling as well as to make getting in and out easier for kids and the elderly. Another benefit, vehicle. it makes the Alza look quite surprisingly sporty MPV. for an MPV uh -huh. as if the owner has fitted a set of lower Military suspension thing. on it. That's quite nice. The wheels are new, 16-inch dual-tone alloys with an interesting spinning design, although the base Alza X gets smaller 15s instead. A they first for Produa are the rear mm -hmm. disc brakes on the Alza AV they to, to go along with these? the electronic parking brake switch inside. Also, a Produa The auto first. hold is so dope. The X and H Alzas get re So I really got to drive my dad's Tesla uh, this last weekend, or the weekend before, whatever it is. One thing that's really awesome about that car, so I literally got to the point, because he was like, if we go anywhere, I'm going to let you drive. And I was like, because he's like, I want you to get excited for your 
Cybertruck. And I was like, all right, I'm already excited, but okay. Right. And so I got to the point where, because it slows down so drastically mm -hmm. when you let off the brake, it just automatically starts coming to a stop. It turns on the brake lights. And right. And, uh, with a regenerative braking or whatever. Yeah, but it's different. It's not just regenerative braking. I mean, like, instantly. Because, like, Toyota Priuses have regenerative braking. Mm -hmm. But you have to hit the brake for it to even slow down a little bit. Right. This one, literally, you take off the brake, and it it, it acts like you're completely slamming on the brake. Like, mm -hmm. it's a drastic... If you're not ready for it, it's a drastic stop. Right. Um, but what's really cool is you let it stop at the uh, light, even if you don't hit the brakes... But the second you touch the brakes, it puts the hold on. Yeah. And you just take your foot right back off. But you don't have to go in and set it. It's automatic. Hmm. And it's the most amazing thing. You don't even have to do that because unless you're going downhill, which I think it would still stop completely. Right. It, it just sits there. Like, I, I didn't, for half the time, I didn't even hit the brake. So, it was, I, I loved it. It was so cool. Rear drum brakes and a traditional hand brake instead, replacing the space okay, so drum brakes, foot parking brake yeah, on right the For the next Alza. generation. They put the fi a carbon fiber, but the they put drum the brake. Right. Daihatsu, this car is based on. It's got the exact same lights and largely the same details. But the taillights are quite interesting because it's all LED for the very first time for a Pro Dua, right down to the turn signals and the reverse lights. But surprisingly, my favorite part of the car at the back here is the simple logo. This has a new font. That's what it. I was it talking about. I love that logo. It looks great. It looks like the Alaska the logo. Brand mm -hmm. Fender. Looks oh, pretty Fender, cool, yeah. Right? I'll put up the Alaska logo because they do the same Inside, lines. I think the interior looks pretty decent. It does have quite a few nice design touches like this chrome ring around the center vent. And I do like this red bit around the cabin. It's nowhere near as garish as what we've seen in the MyV and the Ativa. I feel like they still held back on some stuff they could have done right, to make it look a little more luxury or nicer, especially with... This, I'm assuming, being the top model. And the outside is so insanely good looking. That's what I'm saying. So, I mean, if I'm going to be honest, the first thing that does stand out to me on the interior is the passenger side airbag. Yeah. Because we've been doing it forever. It's hidden. It says airbag there. But you can still see the perforation in the mm -hmm. right light where it's at. But it's hidden to the point where you don't know what it is. Right. Where you're not worried about it being seen. Because I feel like this thing is, I think it's along the line of a Toyota as far as aesthetics go. Yeah. On the, especially the outside on this. Oh, 100%. Level. Well, in my opinion, interior would be about the same too. <laughs> I, I, I can't really see, and I'm sure we'll go over it much closer, the air conditioning area. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that's also holding me back. Yeah, no, the bit. air conditioner area looks like it could be On the other hand, however, updated. this center console looks a little bit too empty, a little bit too plain, too mm -hmm. flat. It's almost as if the designers just completely ran out of ideas of what to put there. As you can see, the <laughs> always say that same stuff. Controls are taken last... directly off the Ativa and simply grafted onto yeah. this see, that's plain disappointing. black yeah. plastic. It just looks so out of place. One more major complaint I have is the steering adjustment. Again, for a brand new Perodua in 2022, uh, we still don't have any telescopic adjustment for really? the steering wheel. I just the don't steering wheel looks it. good. Why, yeah. The rest of the cabin yeah, is quite similar to the Ativa. The seven-inch instrument display and digital speedometer I I like is it. the same as are the buttons on the steering wheel as well as the gear lever. New for the Alza. Oh, let's go back. Let's go back to the steering wheel picture. It had the smart cruise. It the... Did. Okay, so the only thing that I could argue about this, and this is literally nitpicking. I think it looks fantastic. I truly don't care either way. But is actually fi fitting the 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 uh, screen into the full size of the um, the actual right. cluster because you can tell some of those are actual physical lights when at the price that they're at now you can just make a whole screen. I mean, it's probably the it's probably literally pennies different, especially mm -hmm. on this. As are the buttons. Let's see, so normal on that side, and then that. Looks like a but camera button. But compared to button. some of the other cars that we've seen, this is a lot. This looks like a camera button right there. That might be the 360 the view. As well. And then it's got the smart cruise with yeah. the distance control, lane keep assist, 
And I would assume this is the drive mode. Well, as the gear lever. Yeah, comfort or for yeah. Alza performance is the camera button. As it gets pro yep, to us, very button. first 360 degree ah, camera system. Very first nice. impressions, it looks quite low res. You're absolutely right. The like camera feeds the amount of features it has, black borders they should fix those two together. little things yeah. that we talked but about. Hey, Besides that, better, oh, and the nothing. steering. Mm -hmm. The nine inch center screen itself is quite interesting. And I feel like this is a little too much. That's, that is that's very like early 2000s. Face. Yeah. Like, but a can, nine inch screen is nice. That's big. Mm. That's very big, actually. Nine inches? I don't like that the USB is right there. Yeah, that needs to be down. That could have been included down here somewhere. Yeah. In the empty space. On the I AV, agree. it gets a new interface, but what's more important is the small logo at the bottom. That's right. The new Alza no comes CarPlay. with Android Auto. Another first for Produa. Apple About CarPlay damn time. is not available, unfortunately, although most head units we've seen usually have both connections, not just one. Perhaps CarPlay will be added as an update later on. The plain center console aside, the Alza's cabin is quite stylish. The dark red, almost brown inserts give it a bit of a premium look, as do the diamond cut details like on the door cards is and that a the cup quilted holder? premium look as do the diamond cut details on right the there. door cards no, up top, and underneath oh, the quilted yeah, stitching the, on I the part fabric, right part there. leather pop seats. Out. If you Lamborghini want full leather style. upholstery, you can get the gear That's up dope. leather like seat it. cover, which again look and feel quite it's very classic too. Looking. The red highlights and diamond stitching classic details Ferrari. give it a bit of a Lexus vibe. Cool stuff. Another interesting bit is that the Alza will come standard with an RFID sticker for toll payments. This replaces the hmm. built-in smart tags like in the MyV and is not only a first for Perodua, but for any brand. There's got to be a better way than that well. too. Yeah. The rear is perhaps the Alza's strongest aspect. Entry is extremely is easy always and the step up into the cabin <laughs> right. is not too high thanks to the low suspension. The rear doors open up real wide as well. Once inside, you get very good legroom, 90mm more than the old version, despite having the same wheelbase. Here you can slice the seats backwards or forwards to balance legroom with the last row, and recline the backrest as you wish. Paired together with another Produa first, the top mounted rear MC air vents with I like that. control, and this becomes an excellent car for a small family you can slide the seats I, I like all that it has the above air vents mm -hmm. i hope fold the center air. armrest down for extra i do like comfort. the center as well Use the two well i like the center air vents but my thing is is like especially in the very back row you don't feel any air oh like no, you might no. get some at your feet but that's it so it's nice to have air so this is a three row above. i believe so. he said seven no no this is only uh two row no, it's a seven passenger, so it's three, bro. Two isofix. Uh, I, I just, I, I'll be honest. Me personally, I mean, we sell them here too, and everything. The small SUVs with the third row, I absolutely hate it. There's really no. Oh, I'm not. Yeah, I wouldn't be in the market for one either, unless it was. I, I mean, I I would have the back row laid down. Like I even feel like the Kia Telluride mm -hmm. is crossing that line of still being too. Oh, tight. Ju yeah, just barely too tight. Yeah. yeah. Like, if I were going that route, you know what I would do. I'd go minivan all day long. Yeah. Like, I think the minivan... In fact, I was telling him before the video started, I'm trying to get my ex-wife to buy the new... I mean, it's not out for another two years, but she's good for now. Uh, the new Volkswagen ID Buzz, which is a full electric uh, Volkswagen, but it's a minivan, and it looks classic. It's really right. cool looking, so... Anchors to fit child seats easily, and push the last row seats down flat into the floor for a huge boot. This Alza, right. I think, yeah. can be That's a substantial upgrade for current MyV owners looking I just for a bigger go car. That route Produa says 40% of current Alza owners use it as a spacious five-seater anyway. And with the new version, it's significantly better when used that way. It could way. make more sense if it's Still, electric so you can move everything well up a little bit. Alza works as a seven-seat mm -hmm. MPV too, of course. Access to the third row of seats is now even easier with a one-touch tumble function for the second row seats. And the space That's available nice. is definitely an improvement. Those over always the break Alza. though. You can quite no easily how fit you do adults it. Button, in all three rows switch, in this car with electric. leg room to spare for everyone. The last row seats are still quite hard and flat, but as a compact MPV, this is still very impressive. 
So that's one thing with me is like the third row, you've, in my opinion, even in the tail you ride, you've got leg room. It's just the fact that your feet. I would have are, to sit in that. And I'm well, sure your, your feet I'm are eight. so close to like where your knees are that your knees are like in your chest when you're sitting in the third row. Yeah. And I'm short and I hate third row. Boot space right. has been much improved as Outside well. Outside of the minivan or like the suburban. Up, there's actually some usable excursion. space left now with 137 liters compared to just 83 in the old car. Fold the third row wow. down and you get 498 liters of space up from just 348 liters from before. There's even a handy underfloor storage for you to use. So overall, this car's usability and practicality is top notch. And in case you're wondering, the spare tire is mounted under the car and it's a full size spare for all variants. It had under a the bonnet is a new 1.5 liter 2NR VE to put the tool dual in. VVTi engine, replacing the older 3SZ VE DVVT unit from before. This is now a Euro 4 engine up from Euro 3 of the old Alza, and it has very slightly higher output numbers compared to the same engine in the MyV and Arus. The Alza now has 106 PS and 138 Newton meters of torque which is 3 PS and 1 Nm more than before. Together Go back. I want to know what that is in actual like horsepower. Hey Google. Uh, 137 Newton meters to foot pounds of torque, I guess. I don't know. 137 Newton meters. 101. That's not bad. And then what's the uh, 76 horse? kilowatts? Oh yeah. 76 kilowatts to horsepower. So 100 and 100. But that's for the Myvi and the Arus, the Alzas. Okay, I mean, I, think I mean, there's not a big difference here at, at all. That point I didn't even top, realize. Yeah. Which is 3 PS and 1 Nm more than before. Together with the new dual mode CVT or DCVT as so, already used in the latest Myvi. Hold on, I'm sorry. Uh, if it has 100 and 100 and you have seven people in there. Yeah, I don't, it wouldn't pass safety standards, I don't think. In the U.S., because we fat, yeah, we'd weigh down that. We're bad really boy. fat, so. <laughs> Would y'all now? If my math is wrong, let me know because that's what I came up with is 101 horsepower, 101 foot pounds of torque. Um, let me know if I'm wrong. Ativa Prodoa says the new Alza yeah. can now do as much as 22 kilometers per liter on Malaysian roads. With that as an average, Prodoa claims you can drive it from KL to Penang on less than 40 ringgit worth of fuel. Helping that is a new Eco driving mode selectable via a drive button on the steering wheel. The Alza now has three drive modes to choose from, Eco, Normal and Power. As for safety, the new Alza has it all covered. Six airbags are fitted as standard across the board as is Advanced mm -hmm. Safety Assist or ASA 3.0. So, Autonomous Emergency Braking or AEB lane departure warning and prevention, and electronic stability control are all fitted as standard for everyone. The top spec AV adds on adaptive cruise control with a stop and hold start function. This is basically a low mm. speed follow function that can be used in traffic jams, which is a first for Produa. The AV also gets lane keep control for a full level 2 semi-autonomous driving as well as a blind spot monitor and You're rear like straight up in the book. <laughs> right. so taking now, pictures. As for pricing, the all new second generation Produa Alza ranges from under 65,000 ringgit for the base X variant, while the Alza H goes for about 70,000 ringgit. The Alza AV tops out at around 77,000 with SST. If you're familiar with the old Alza prices, you may be surprised to see that even the cheapest new Alza X is more expensive than the old top Alza AV. As but always. But remember, the previous Alza is a 30. He's like, but remember, it looks like new this. New design <laughs> with very basic safety specs. Just two airbags and no electronic stability control. It's about time the Alza catches up with the times. So that's mm -hmm. our first Did look at the, the all-new 2022 mm. Perodua Alza. Yes, it's a fair bit more expensive much. than before, yeah. but if you were to compare this against the old car, this is clearly much bigger with far better features and especially better safety. 
and even at these higher prices, it is at least 15 to 20,000 ringgit cheaper than its non-national rivals. So for a lot of Malaysians who are looking for a compact MPV, the Alza remains your default value choice. So what do you think of this car's look? I think it's pretty dope. I like it a lot. Cheap, cheap, thank you again for the suggestion. And I'm glad that we we did check this out. Um, it's that That is cool knowing that it's the second, only the second uh, vehicle that, I think is, it's crazy. that has gotten the same name updated. Uh, so that's that's neat to know. And obviously, I mean, this is a massive upgrade from the the previous generation. Yeah, it's absolutely stunning. Um, I like it a lot. I wouldn't have any issue. The only issue I'd have, again, is if those numbers that I came up with are accurate. Mm -hmm. Feels like that's very underpowered, especially for a vehicle this size. Maybe we just misunderstood. I, that's what I'm thinking. I, there's no way that has 100 horsepower. Now, what's really funny, so a lot of y'all's cars, I know y'all come with a lot of three-cylinder engines. Mm -hmm. And it's typically outside of, I think, a, a couple hybrids. I, I'm pretty sure the, uh, and then a Mitsubishi. What's the little tiny one that has a three-cylinder? I can't think of the name. Mirage. Yeah, the Mirage. Yeah, so the Mirage has a three-cylinder, and then the, uh, um, the BMW i8 has a three-cylinder. Mm -hmm. But it's also a hybrid. Right. Um, and now Nissan is about to come out with a three-cylinder turbo car. Why? So, I don't know. It's more. It's got more power and better fuel economy than the last. So do electric vehicles. Exactly. Why not just go that route? Yeah. Uh, are y'all wanting to see electric vehicles in these models? If so, let us know down in the comments. But guys, if y'all enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you want to see our future videos, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification. And if you want to support us directly, hit that join button. And with that being said, my name is Miles. And my name is Fez. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace. Out.